course, you'll see fabulous hotels. And now they're building pools in the hotels. See, all the sunshine, all the beaches, they're building pools. One hotel has put in three pools. Hot water, cold water, and seltzer. <laughs> you swim three strokes, you belch, you go back four. Go down there, see the chandeliers hanging from nowhere. Palm trees growing out of the marble. Fantastic furnishings. It makes you wonder what God could do if he only had the money. <laughs> the weather should turn bad in Miami, God forbid. Then you have an economic collapse. Because that's all it lives on, weather. And if there's a snowstorm in New York, that's the headlines in Miami. They don't care about anything else. Everybody's freezing in New York, thank God. They're all freezing in New York. It makes it warmer in Miami, you see, that way. One fellow on a, during that cold spell, remember that cold spell Miami had a few years ago? One fellow was lying on the beach and a cold, cold day. Another one goes by, he says, he's lying there shivering. Says, How come you're on the beach? It's a cold day. He says, I came to Miami to get a color. He says, today you're going to get tan. He says, purple I'm getting. <laughs> of course, the most common question that one Jewish man asks another in Miami is, what hotel you're staying? One man says, I'm staying at the Rani Plasma. No, nah, no, nah. he says, you mean the Ronnie Plaza? Plasma means blood. He says, the $60 a day I'm paying is seltzer. <laughs> At the Algiers Hotel in Miami, they have a fabulous menu, really great. And they had a convention there last winter came up, they have many conventions at the Algiers, and sitting in the dining room at one table was a very gay party, eating everything, everything on the menu they were eating. One man sat there disconsolate, depressed, didn't say a word, didn't touch a thing. Then I said, why don't you eat something? The food is delicious. He said, I can't eat. I forgot my teeth in New York. <laughs> he says, that's your trouble? You happen to be sitting next to the right person. And he bent down and out of a little black satchel, he took a set of teeth. Here, try these. He put him in, he says, I'm sorry, it's too big. He says, just a minute, don't give up, don't give up, I got more. He took out another one, he says, try these. He says, just a little bit too small. <laughs> just a minute, don't give up. He dug down and took out another pair. He says, how are these? Oh, he says, perfect. You're a good dentist, I see. He says, no, I'm an undertaker. <laughs> one, one woman loves to show off to another in Miami. This is where their showing off tendencies come out to the forefront. Things they wouldn't say in New York, they'll say down there. Let me tell you about three Jewish ladies sitting at the Eden Rock, trying to impress each other. One of them said, ladies, I think we should get to know each other. She says, my name is Mrs. Cohn. She says, my husband works in dresses in New York. He's known as a typhoon. <laughs> we have a son, Jason, goes to Harvard. He shouldn't walk, we bought him a Jaguar. The other lady says, listen, lady, she says, my name is Mrs. Shapiro. My husband is in steel in Pittsburgh, a maggot. <laughs> my son goes to Yale. He shouldn't walk, we bought him a Mercedes Benzedrine. <laughs> the third lady said, ladies, my name is Mrs. Rabinowitz. Rabinowitz. To tell you the truth, my husband works in a candy store. My son goes to City College. He shouldn't walk. We bought him a second-hand Ford. And ladies, I'm sorry, I must leave, leave you right now and go home and cook dinner for my husband. When she left, <coughs> Mrs. Shapiro turned to Mrs. Cohn. She says, hmm, Mrs. Cohn, correct me if I'm wrong. Rabinovitz, isn't that a Puerto Rican name? <laughs> One man came down to the beach, right in front of the Algiers, and he says to the man sitting next to him, he says, tell me, how's the water? He says, lukewarm. He jumped in, he almost froze to death. He came out, he rushed back to me, he says, I thought you told me the water was lukewarm. He says, to me, it looked warm. <laughs> Miami is getting a little bit... Miami's getting a little bit disturbed about the trend today for Jewish people to try other places for vacations. And they're trying to sell Miami Beach as the best place, best place to vacation. For example, dude ranches. Uh, may I tell you about three partners who worked in one garment center? Uh, Herl, Beryl, and Schmerl. That was their names. They decided on vacation, no more Miami. This year they're going to a dude ranch. They called up a travel agent. They said, please book for us for Harold, Beryl, and Schmerl, they're all going to the dude ranch. 
He says, with those names, you want me to register you? He says, Hell, you be Huck. Bettle, you be Buck. Schmel says, I'm not going. <laughs> if I had... If I had to talk about what I thought, psychologically, was the most outstanding... You want a few more minutes on that one before we go on? Are you ready? Come on back with me now. If I had to think what is probably the most admirable trait of the Jewish people, it would be their philosophical outlook on life, on love, on tragedy, on death. It is their light touch, their philosophy that gives comfort. There is a psychology of comfort to the Jewish philosophy. For example, even in the most tragic circumstances, one Jewish soldier had been severely wounded. He's been in a hospital, he'd been in a hospital unconscious for two weeks. When he came out of the coma, the nurse was patting him. She says, oh, she says, you're a lucky boy. You're a lucky boy. He says, why am I lucky? He says, you should be dead now, but you're not. Not only that, but you're being fed very nourishing food right now. He says, no, I'm starving. He says, don't say you're starving. You're being fed nourishing food right now through a tube. Reach around and you'll feel it. He says, you got maybe two more tubes? He says, yes, why? He says, bring the tubes. I want tomorrow you and the doctor shall have lunch with me. <laughs>